You ready? Ready. Right. I'm Ellis Hayes, this one. Welcome to Soul. James Baldwin. Earth, Wind & Fire. Stevie Wonder, Nikki Giovanni. Harry Belafonte. Al Green. Yo, this is every day. Can you imagine what Soul would have been like for a 20-year run? Los Angeles, Detroit, Newark, cities across the country were erupting. There were so few positive African-American images on television. We needed to reimagine ourselves on this American landscape. Got any ideas, fellas? Live and in color from New York City, Soul. I'm Ellis Hayes, the producer of Soul. And we are happy to have you with us this evening. Hey, everybody, this is Mike, and you're watching Real Black. And I am excited, super duper excited, because... With us, um, oh, if you if you just saw the trailer, the uh, the movie Mr. Soul. It's been a long time coming, but it's a true labor of love, and I, and I'm happy to report I've seen it, and it is a work of genius that illuminates and shines light on a true genius, Mr. Ellis Hazlip. And with us we have uh, for our podcast uh, his niece Melissa Hazlip. Welcome to Real Black Podcast. Thank you so much, Mike. It's great to be with you again. Absolutely. Yeah, we met at Black Star. You've been working on this for quite some time. Can you tell tell people about the journey? It's been an incredible journey. And uh, I can say that it took us 10 years to get here. So I've always thought about the long game. That's always key for survival, as we know. But it was just important to make sure we had the story right. Of course, we had a lot of funding that we had to get. It was a very um, highly intensive, uh, rights intensive kind of film because we have this extraordinary uh, music in the film and all the footage as well. So it took us a long time to get all those elements together, but we're here now. And it's just exciting to bring it to the people, especially on this in the virtual space, since we're all home and yeah. know, sheltering at home. Well, a lot of people are not going to watch the end. So let's get that out of the way. For those who enjoyed the trailer and they want to see more and they can't wait to just listen to the rest of this conversation, where can they catch uh, Mr. Soul right now as we speak? Yeah, right now the film is actually streaming. And it's streaming in about 60 theaters across the country. You don't have to leave your house. Just go to our website, www.mrsoulmovie.com. And that's www.mrsoulmovie.com. And then you go to the screenings page, and that'll show you the list of all of our cinema partners, our museums, our cultural institutions that are all playing it. You just pick which one you want to support, click on that, and you can watch the movie for 72 hours. So you can watch it again and again. You can rewind it. You can stop it. Uh, it's a real treat for the whole family. It levels the playing field for a lot of independent filmmakers because um, it really does. this COVID thing has kind of made everything the same in a way. But, you know, I'm just grateful we came up with this idea because we knew it was an important film and that it was uplifting and inspiring. And we're just going through such dark times right now, especially as a people, the people of color, especially uh, with the revolution that we're pushing for and against. And I think that uh, a film like this, which is a love letter to black culture, is so necessary right now. And I love that you can access it yourself and you can decide how you want to see it, when you want to see it. And half your purchase, 50% goes to that theater or cultural institution. The other half goes to us, independent filmmakers. Um, and you can feel good about that, supporting us directly. Yeah, so uh, whoever's watching, whenever they're watching, you need to go to mrsoul.com, mrsoulmovie.com, and um, order this up so that we can continue to see more of uh, Melissa's work and that it won't take... 10 years and I'm I'm just angling for the Blu-ray because you have so many interviews. I just want to see uncut the footage. You have such a treasure trove of people. I mean, I think it's a needed film, but the timing couldn't be better because so many of these people, be, besides your uncle, um, you caught a lot of people right, right at the right moment. A lot of people that are in the yeah. movie are still with us, but a few aren't. Can you just um, share some, some of the interviewees that besides the people we saw in the trailer that you got oh, a chance yeah. to meet with and talk with? We wanted to have a wide variety of both people who are in the show, artists who uh, performed on the show as well, and cultural commentators, historians. It was really important to, because there's so many stakeholders for this story. 
it's not just who we are, but it's who we want to be and who's continuing, who's the legacy of soul. So we had professors like uh, Sarah, uh, Sarah Elizabeth Lewis from Harvard University, but we also had Nikki Giovanni talking about her conversation with James Baldwin. And we had artists like um, The Last Poets and Black Ivory. That's really important to, because you know who they are now, mm -hmm. but it's really exciting to contrast that with this sort of treasure trove, as you call it, this time capsule. And um, that was important also to situate it in what's happening today and have someone like Questlove, who's an artist and also a podcaster and has an encyclopedic well, that's, brain about soul. Well, that's the Philly connection in addition to Sister Sonia Sanchez and Louis Messiah. So we got to give Philly the official shout yeah. out. Whoop de whoop. Got to give Philly the shout out. Shout out to Louis Messiah and the Scribe Video Center and, of course, Sonia Sanchez the poet laureate of Philadelphia. Right. And she was also on our board of academic advisors, as was Louie, because it was important to, to give this film the type of academic spine and historical relevance and importance. And we, and we talked to a lot of historians and people that are steeped in black culture and black history so that we could get the story right. Yeah, no, the storytelling is crystal clear. I mean, this, this, um, for those who don't know, and maybe I'm geeking out a little bit too much, so I'll, I'll slow it down and rewind it back for the people who might <laughs> not be as familiar as I am with Soul. Soul was uh, a national educational television precursor to PBS series that was funded as a result of the Kerner Commission's study on um, two Americas, one white, one black, which we mm -hmm. talk about quite a bit on our podcast with Charles Woods. Mm -hmm. And it was a reaction to, a black film traditionally is reactionary, it's never proactive. However, Ellis Hazlip was somebody who was in the right place at the right time. He knew exactly the kind of content to create for television. And if you are a fan of something like Soul Train, this is sort of like the... Um, Cognoscenti edition, the New York version of a of that kind of show. Did I get it right? I think that's very accurate, yes. Okay. And it was really important for Ellis Hazel to share the full spectrum of the black experience, that it was undiluted and unapologetic, and that it didn't it wasn't seen through the white gaze and there was so there was no justification and this idea of assigning value or or really deciding whether it was valuable. It was already innately valuable. And that's what Ellis Hazlip really believed in, that black culture, black history is American history, that black right. history is now, and that black art and black culture is a leading element. It doesn't pull, but it leads. But and I think that's very, very true. That, wait, say that again, because I'm, I'm just... It doesn't this idea pull. that... It doesn't pull, it leads. Right. And when you think about, and, and uh, Louis, no, actually it's uh, Felipe Luciano says that okay. in the film. He says, Ellis Hazlip knew that black culture yeah. and led, it didn't pull, that it was world culture. And that's, that's, that's what makes this movie so needed now and, I mean, I, and necessary, the fact that people can sit wherever they want, wherever they, wherever their two feet are, they can watch this movie. And I think it's great because we're in, we're in this re, this resurgence of cultural and political awareness. And that's what this show captured. But for a long time, people, this film, this show, this TV series only existed in people, a small number of people's memories because yeah. it didn't, the tapes weren't there. And a lot of, a lot of this material actually was lost. So can you talk about the, the archival process and getting this, mm -hmm. get, restoring these things or finding them, what was available, what still isn't available, all that stuff. Yeah, it was very interesting and challenging, frustrating and um, exhilarating because we knew that there were 130 episodes between 1968 and 1973, but we also knew that people weren't really checking for black culture in 1968 and we had to fight to create a visibility for it. And that's what Soul did, creating this space that said, you know, here we are, just accept it. And there's a, a vast renaissance of culture happening. 
So what we had to do it was incumbent upon us to find as many episodes as possible. There were certain ones that uh, belonged to the network WNET Channel 13, which is a flagship PBS station in New York City. And but they had a finite number. And so it we had to go on somewhat of a wild goose chase and also like a private detector detective rather reaching out to people in Europe, reaching out to all the soul heads in London, people who had collections, uh, talking to historians. And we reached out to every living person who was on the show or was part of the show backstage, even like the sound guy. We were thinking, well, what does the sound guy have? And sure enough, brother, you know, living over in New Jersey, I called him up and he said, oh yeah, well, a lot of times they would tell us we had to erase the shows in order to make room for on the next for the next show. So this idea of archiving nationally and the preservation, not just of black culture, but of live television shows. All right, well, tell, tell, really tell me this brother didn't listen to the man. <laughs> he didn't. Thank you. He, and, it, and it wasn't about, you know, we, we have this idea about bootlegging and uh, that wasn't the issue. It right. wasn't um, something criminal that he was doing, but it was more like, he had just recorded a live show with Stevie Wonder where Stevie Wonder kept performing and they had run out of tape and they had literally had to scramble to get another tape. So his idea was, well, we might have to delete this. Let me go ahead and make a copy of it. And little did he know that he was preserving this type of culture. Right. So that was really important. So when we went on this journey, we had to be open to everything. You know, yeah. go, I would literally going over to Anna Maria Horsford's house and she would not let me leave the house with her tapes, but I could sit and watch them on television. Okay. <laughs> Until I finally convinced her, you know, I know this guy who could just make copies in an hour and I'll come right back, you know. So pe- the thing I recognize is that people have a very proprietary relationship. Well, no, they about know. This show, and they know. <laughs> they know. You know? <laughs> they know. Like, yeah, I'm, wor- I'm, I'm working on a film. Yeah, okay. You have the pedigree. But um, I, I wouldn't let you out of my house either. With uh, that's right. <laughs> with my prize, this is my picture. Of my granddaddy. What? How many? Listen, how many people listen. besides Anne Marie Horsford? You had you had stills of Arsenio Hall doing magic, which I I always knew he was a magician, but I never knew he'd done it on television that young because he's from he Cleveland. Was, he is from Cleveland, and what happened was uh, one of the artists who was working closely with Ellis Hayslip. Um, her name, let me think of her name. I'll think of it in a second. Okay. It's Grosvenor. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And she was traveling. She happened to be in Cleveland for a house party of certain women, kind of like the way they would do for those who remember Tupperware parties. Mm-hmm. You get together and you would trot out your child to be the entertainment for the show, uh, for the party. And so out came Arsenio Hall and... She was so touched by this child's ability to do magic. She called up Ellis right away and said, I've met this incredibly gifted child that you should see. And of course, um, Ellis said, well, bring the child, bring the baby to New York. (laughs) (laughs) You couldn't really do without the mother's permission, but that's what they did. And so they had him on the show. It was his first television appearance. And he actually called himself, you know, magic which became a problem for Magic Johnson later on. Was his learned. finger still... <laughs> wait, hang on. Was it, it was his finger that long? Because there's only stills in the uh, documentary. I don't know if the video got wiped on that one or not. But So that the reason why is that is one of the episodes that does not physically exist. Yeah. But luckily, Chester Higgins, who's a magnificent photographer, uh, was the house photographer for the soul show. And he had an entire contact sheet that showed all the artists on that show. And I saw it and I was like, Oh my God, it's real. It really happened. Right. And so, all, we had to piece together certain episodes that way. For example, the uh, Tony Morrison as well. And another show that featured Betty Shabazz when she was doing a tribute to her husband who had been assassinated, wow. Malcolm X. And so we had to, we created like a graphic aesthetic that looked like a television show so we could show the photos and make it feel like you were there on in the episode. Well, more, more power to you. I mean, it just, it just talks more about how we must 
all preserve things. Wow. You know, some people are a little slow. We're recording this on September 26, 2020. Right, the conversations around coronavirus. Now, if you're watching this because this is YouTube, you're watching this in the future, and they found cures for that and all kinds of other ailments. It does not negate the fact that this movie exists. You just might not be able to watch it there. Okay, so don't well, don't think that do there's a resurgence news, of <laughs> Corona because you're watching this in 2025. We cured uh -huh. that. We cured all the ailments. We found every episode. We went back in time and we filmed, we reshot all of the Mr. Souls for you. That's how far in the future this video is going to last. But anyway. I love it. But all right, so the last thing you were going to say, I'm sorry. If you are in 2021, I'm not sure how, I mean, this is a, I love this. I love your long game. This is great, okay. you know, long-term thinking. Got to okay. have it. If it is 2021 and you're seeing this, we will have a PBS broadcast. So very soon, I can't announce it just yet, but it will be during Black History Month. I will say that. Wow. So just save the date, and we'll see Mr. Soul also on PBS. Well, I'm going to have to get that number of the guy in Jersey. <laughs> we might have to have some, because I don't know if they're going to give a whole month of showing every Mr. Soul episode. Let me tell you where you can see them, though. There are about 25 episodes that you can see in their entirety. Oh, this there's is too website. good to be true. Really? Yeah. Wait, yeah. so you, you mean to tell me there's almost one for every day? Almost. Well, I can watch them over and over again, month. these shows, on yes. my computer free. for free? On your computer for free. Full free, full free. Free 99? So, Go ahead. Free 99. Tell people, please. <laughs> www dot shout factory tv dot com Are so shout factory tv dot com slash series slash soul now they have shout factory has a lot of nostalgia a lot of um, sort of vintage classics tv so they have it but even better if y'all are on amazon prime this just happened amazon prime has 24 episodes as well so if you're not a member you can join or whatever but the, there are also some on a um uh website called Tubi and also Pluto TV. Okay. And so they have the classics as well. Thank you so much for taking the time to share all this information, spending 10 years to make a great film, a classic that stands alongside, as you say, I am not your Negro. Um, I think the black power mixtape would make a, a great double feature with this and adjust your color is another movie that comes to mind about uh, Petey Green from DC, yeah. another broadcaster who's kind of unsung. Um, but thank you. Thank you so much, Melissa Hazlip and um, Mr. Soul, the movie. Mr. Soul, the movie. Thank you, Mike D. Appreciate what you're doing too. And keeping all of our hopes and dreams alive in the black cultural space. Keep hope alive. Okay. Do you know who you are? Soul was giving TV exposure to activist revolutionaries. They want me to go to Vietnam to shoot some black folks that never lynched me, never called me nigga. You're so much more than Blacks all around the country say yes. Stay high, sucker chump. You could do anything you wanted. The FBI was very, very disturbed by that. How did we get the trip? I said, Ellis, this is a piece of history. Let's fight for it. <laughs> <laughs> There exists, as far as I know, no TV program that deals with my culture so completely, so freely, and so beautifully. There is nothing, nothing we cannot do. Black seeds keep on growing. And it is nothing but evolution in my soul.